Hi, welcome back to a new video on the channel. I'm your host, Michael from Football Talk, and today we're gonna to be doing a video that's a tad different to normal, but hopefully something that will be a regular series on the channel. And it's my honest opinion, Yeovil Town FC edition. My aim for this series is if you haven't been to a particular stadium or to watch a particular club before, I want to help you make a proper informed decision on whether or not to go and watch this said team. Today we're starting with Yeovil Town and hopefully there'll be many more to come. If you do enjoy, please like, subscribe, all that good stuff. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Part one, the rise and fall. Yeovil Town FC are a club based in Somerset. They currently play in the sixth tier of the English football pyramid in the National League South. They were founded in 1895 and play at Hewish Park Stadium. Now the rise and fall of Yeovil Town has been pretty well documented, but it's certainly the fall, unfortunately, that has been the more distinguished part of the story. I'm going to take you back to 2012-13 where Yeovil Town did the unthinkable. After a League One playoff final win, they got themselves promoted to the Championship, which was an incredible achievement. This promotion meant that they'd be playing the likes of Nottingham Forest, Burnley and even Brighton and Hove Albion who will be competing in Europe this year. It was an absolutely incredible achievement and the thing you've got to keep in mind is that only 10 years prior to this, Yeovil were in the National League or the back then Conference League which just made it even more special. Unfortunately, after just one season in the Championship, Yeovil finished rock bottom of the table, were relegated to League One, and this was just the start of what was going to be a very, very horrid few years for Yeovil Town fans. Yeovil faced back-to-back -back relegations as the following season, they were then relegated from League One into League Two, where they would be lucky enough to do a few seasons in League Two, before then being relegated all the way down to the National League, meaning their 15-year spell in the Football League was officially over. Yeovil Town supporters are facing up to the club's relegation out of the Football League. It's just the hope that kills you. They always follow Yeovil Town, wherever they are. Never mind, we'll be back. From what I gathered from close friends and family who were Yeovil Town supporters, they were very optimistic about the first season in the National League. And to be fair, they had every right to be. They were a decent sized club, good fan base, good bit of money behind them. There was no reason they couldn't bounce back to the Football League on their first try. A fourth place finish in their first season, a very, very good start, went to the playoffs, lost to Barnet, meaning they would then have to play yet another season in the National League, but unfortunately it never got better after that. We then fast forward to the 22-23 season, where Yeovil definitely had one of the worst seasons they've ever had in their history as a football club. With countless ownership problems, owners taken over, then not taken over, they were relegated from the National League into the National League South head of the 23-24 campaign, which is where they sit now in the sixth tier of English football, confirming their four relegations in just under 10 years. Part two, hospitality. So being born in Dartford and moving down to Somerset when I was fairly young, I then went to my first Yeovil game when I was around 14, 15 with a couple of friends and was very impressed by what I saw. There was a good buzz, there was busy crowds, there was a great beer tent which had all the 12.30 kickoff, serving food, drinks and even had a good blend of home and away fans all mixing in together, having a really good time. One of the very sad things I did notice is that as Yeovil started to fall down the leagues, so did their match day experiences. It seemed like the club this whole time was being really poorly run and they didn't even seem to care about generating revenue from the match day experience itself. That's catering, hospitality, food, drinks, everything like that. Luckily, I'm sure Yeovil fans will be extremely pleased. They've had new owner Mark Hillier take over, who seems to be really passionate about what he's doing. So much so that they recently bought in a new burger van, a new Badgers bar. It even did so well on their first home game of the season that two weeks later, just two weeks later, they then put another bar up on match days, let alone all the live DJs and bands that they've been bringing as well. I must say it was very, very refreshing to see because I've had some pretty boring match days at Yeovil, but obviously living so local, it's just a very easy one to do. So it's great to see that there is a bit of initiative going forward from the new owner to then go and make the match day experience that bit better. Part three, the fans. 
The best part of this episode for me, without a doubt, like most football clubs, is the fans. Back in the 2017-18 season, when Yeovil Town were playing in League 2, they were getting an average attendance of 2,950. Fast forward to this current season, yes, this current season, the opening day of the season at Hewish Park, they had 3,400 fans in attendance for the sixth tier of English football, with just the 86 of them being St Albans fans. For me, that is nothing short of incredible for a team who have suffered so much in the last 10 years, and even with another relegation this season just gone. I have to give credit where credit is due, and Yeovil Town fans deserve plenty of them. I did vlog a video on my channel. I took me and my dad. We went and watched Truro City on a Tuesday night with a good mate of mine who's a Yeovil fan, where even on a Tuesday night at a home fixture, they still managed to get an attendance of 3,300. Just incredible. Part four, the football. Considering I live so close to Yeovil, probably 20-30 minutes away, the biggest thing that put me off going to watch Yeovil on a more regular basis, let alone my love for Dartford and West Ham, is because the football just wasn't good enough in my opinion. The truth is, I've always found it fairly boring, uh, very hoofball-like and a proper lack of identity when playing. But finally, but finally, after attending exciting wins against Truro, where they won in the 90th minute, and exciting wins over Eastbourne Borough, my sense of wanting to go has rejuvenated just that little bit. I know some of the exciting results Yeovil are having this season doesn't always benefit the fans, but as a neutral and for outsiders wanting to come watch, I must say Yeovil have been making some fantastic games this season, some very entertaining games, although some of them are not on your side with a 4-3 loss to Haven at Waterlooville, but great wins over Truro, Eastbourne, even Western Supermare are making Yeovil that bit more exciting to watch yet again. Yeovil are slowly bringing back special moments to Hewish Park, just like these ones. It's all good hearing all this from me as a neutral, so I thought I'd get a good friend of mine who has been a lifelong Yeovil fan, ask him a couple of questions, so then you can get a proper fan's perspective on this story. Right, we are here with Michael Calverley, great name by the way, Yeovil Town Got it. FC fan, lifelong fan, is that correct? Yeah, I'd say so. I think my first ever game was when I was about, I'm going to say about seven or eight years old, first trip to Hewish Park, first game at a football stadium, it was really, really good. And I mean, first question, got yep. to start with, miserable few years, yeah. very miserable few years. Yeah. What has made you stick with the club through those? <sighs> to be honest, you've always got to support your local club. Massive, massive advocate for that. And I think, um, yeah, we've had a lot of lows, but we've had a lot of highs as well previous to that. Um, and it's just something that's just kept me going back all the time. I just love the atmosphere. It, not everybody gets on with everybody, but that's the same at every club. Um, and I think, just to be honest, I think, the whole atmosphere of that club has just got better as the years have gone on. It may be so much now in the last six months, seven months, but not over the course of the last four or five years, but it's getting better. And um, new owner, improvement, Yeah, you see it? Yeah, really nice bloke. Met him in person a few times. Um, he just seems to know what works for the people, not just for the football club, what, what's going to work outside of the football club, the community, the bars, the drinking, the food, the entertainment, like everything that just sort of gels the club together. Perfect. And very last question, the Go all on. important one for this video. Go on. If you're not a Yeovil fan, you've never done the stadium before. Yeah. Would you suggest a visit to Hewish Park? Now, yes. Now, 100% yes. I think, like I say, what I just said with the whole atmosphere around the ground, the pre-match, the post-match, the game, the whole atmosphere, it's it's very family orientated as well as if you want to just go for the whole football side of things. Um, and yeah, I definitely recommend it to someone to go and do, especially if you're just nearby or you, you, you've never been, 100%. Perfect. You can find Michael's links for socials down below. Michael, yep. thanks for coming on. No problem at all, mate. Part five, my honest opinion.
So the main point of this video, my honest opinion, I've been to lots of different stadiums and football grounds and clubs, whether it be in England or other countries. Would I pick to go watch Yeovil Town over some of the stadiums I've been to? Yes, I would. Do keep in mind I use the word some. It won't come above too many of them. There is loads of better match day experiences out there. But I do believe that if you want to come watch some more no local non-league football, this is your place to go. Considering a team in the sixth tier of English football can still get over 3,000 fans at a home game is ultra impressive. You also get to see a stadium which has got a capacity of 9,500. And let alone, I do 100% feel that the match day experience at Hewish Park is 100% getting better. Like every club, it's the fans that make it. And as much as I would only like to see Dartford succeed in this league this year, I really do hope that Yeovil Town fans get something to smile about in the very near future. At the end of the day, I think with what they've been through, they probably deserve it. <laughs>